Welcome back to Perspective with Itu, where we have conversations that matter with your favorite celebrities starting yes. And today we have the extraordinary Ayam Pama, a dynamic artist with roots spanning from Swaziland, Zambia and Durban, a former contestant on Idol South Africa Season 3. Aya's journey led her from the stage to screens big and small. Her debut album, A State of Aya, marked her entry into the music scene, followed by roles on popular TV shows and even voice work in animation. Now with her latest EP, Ayanda Amanda Army, Aya continues to captivate audiences with her unique blend of urban and rural influences. Darling, she's been on Ashes to Ashes. She's been on Idols season Three, is that a fact? She's been on Judge Tenji Wekambule. She's been on Our Perfect Wedding, Saints and Sinners, Soul Sundays, and the list just goes on and on and on. And without further ado, please help me welcome the amazing, the phenomenal. How are you doing, dolls? I'm good. Are you good? Yeah. I'm really happy to be here with you. So, oh, I am so grateful. And I'll tell you why. Because I think you're one of the soul sisters that I think when people look at, they they think, um, like, she must be a soul sister. So it's a spiritual, it's... Why, but yeah, it's just together. It's, yeah, it's, it's you know, all things hold us up. Yes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to have this conversation with you because I feel like through our personal journeys, we are able to bring so much hope and healing to people. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm so happy. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. Yeah. I'm grateful to be here. Sure. First podcast ever. Really? <laughs> you know, so it's a, it's a huge honor. It's sure. so humbling. Yeah. And I see you as a soul sister as well, Ooh. you know. Um, and it's interesting that you use that term soul and sister because I'd never seen myself as a soul, you know, and so being a sister is having relationship with other women, having a relationship with even other men, brothers, having an honest relationship, soul to soul, soul to soul. And the penny just dropped in terms of what that really means. Yeah. And I think a lot of us don't have those types of relationships. You know, I think we come from an era where when it was okay, but as soon as you get to Joburg, it's very difficult to connect with people soul to soul because we are all so hungry for just success and we all like want to ride up, you know what I mean? And therefore, you get so many people who would rather ride on you rather than to really connect and really to just get to know you better. What does soul to soul mean to you in terms of who you are as I am done. It means sincerity. It means courage. Um, having the courage to bear my soul. Like you're saying, you know, the, the industry, Johannesburg yeah. is a, a space where I go, or where I used to go. Yeah. I can't show anybody who I am. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah. I must just be happy go lucky I. So. Because it was kind of like a wave. You know when you're in the sea mm-hmm. and the wave comes and then it takes you mm-hmm. and then you come up and you go. Yeah. And then the wind comes and it yeah. takes you again. You come yeah. up and you, you know. Yeah. It was like that. And there's so. people next to you and we're all being taken by waves. And sometimes we're together in this wave and then we're separated, you know. So, so it's just so, we're so quick. Um, and I felt not conducive towards because when you show somebody your soul, well, before that, mm. I thought that when you show somebody your soul, you give them weapons to hurt you and to use against you. Ooh. Um, but the thing about that is if I'm not showing you my soul, that means that whatever we're doing is not real. Yeah. So what's the point? Then what's the point? Sit that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's taken me so long to get to a point where 
it is what it is. I'll yeah. give you me, the me that I know sincerely at the time, because I'm always evolving, of course. There's so many things that I'm learning and that's shifting and changing, you know? So I'll give you who I am today. And if we, if it doesn't work for you or it doesn't, it's fine. Maybe our soul connection will reconnect later because yeah. our souls are in different places at this particular time. But I have a responsibility. You see, that's the thing. Yeah. I've got a responsibility to be honest about my soul because then it sits with me. Yeah. One is that, guys, it's tiring yeah. being an actress 24 seven. Sure. Even at spa. Sorry, sorry, they haven't paid for the air time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Even no, at the shops. shops. Yeah. You must be an actress if I'm not in the mood, even wherever. No, that's exhausting and draining. And then sometimes I, I used to end up being an actress for myself. So I didn't even know who I was, what yeah. my soul is really saying, because I'm so busy acting. Sure. Oh, break that down for me. Not knowing where you are acting so much that you get to a point where you even lose yourself. Mm. Oh, I I act. I don't know how to explain it, but it just kind of felt like I was watching myself. Sure. And I didn't know how to connect this one person that's watching and the other one that's dancing. Ooh. And busy. I didn't know how to connect the two. I didn't know what to do with that. So I just carried on acting. Mm. <laughs> and when was the breaking point where you're like, okay, Ayanda, you need to find yourself now. Who is Ayanda? Who are you? When did that moment happen? And what was happening? So it's called a rock bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I found myself in the acting. Mm -hmm. It gets tiring to act, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to find things to pick you up. Mm -hmm. I found alcohol to pick me up sure. and keep me buzzing. Mm -hmm. And then it went deeper to other things. Mm -hmm. And that would keep me acting and keep me energized and keep me not having to deal with self, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I have the disease of addiction mm -hmm. and I didn't know that mm -hmm. until I'd lost everything. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting Ikaya, Eteguini, mm -hmm. by myself, mm -hmm. too scared to switch on my cell phone. And for 30 days, I sat in my room. Mm -hmm and prayed and talked to God and shouted at God and didn't want to get out of bed. For a good seven days, I did not get out of bed. Mm. I, I think I might have weaned like on day three. Mm. Like literally, I just refused to leave my room. My mom had to force me to eat around seven days later because I just, I'd lost everything and didn't know who I was. Mm. And I wanted to go. Unfortunately, they didn't have enough pills in the house for me to take myself out. But and, and seriously, I was just like, what am I doing here? Because yeah. I don't even know who I am. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Mm. But in those conversations or in me shouting at God, shouting at God, I would sleep in the day because I didn't want to speak with my family. Mm. And then at night, I would do the shouting. I mean, obviously shouting inside voice. Mm. But that is where I realized that we're starting from ground zero. We're starting from, I have no idea who I am. Mm. Everybody would ask me in interviews, who is Aya? Mm. Oh, Aya is this person who loves music and loves this and loves that. Everything's great, yeah. you know? I was born here, lived here, did this, all these great things, you know? Sure. But that wasn't really who I was. I had no idea. So I'm a work in progress. I'm getting to meet myself. Sure. Through my maker. Through God is showing me, oh, guess what? This is your strong point. Sure. Do you know that this is your strong point? Oh, you like to act and you like to dance. You like to do voiceovers. You like to MC. But did you know that music is actually your calling? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And it's like, oh, really? And it goes, did you know that you're a nurturer? Ooh. Did you know that you're really kind? I know you think you're not, but you are really kind. Did you know that you're resilient? Sure. You know, things like that. Did you know you're dependable? I didn't know I was dependable because I was acting like I wasn't. Mm. Because I was trying to please everybody else. I was letting this person down and that person down and myself down, you know. And then he's also revealed to me certain things. Did you know that, did, it's saying to me, did you know you have people pleasing? So you can sure. sacrifice yourself. 
for somebody else's happiness because you want to be, see somebody else happy mm. because I don't uh, I don't believe that I'm worthy enough yeah. to say, no, this doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's certain times where I'll have the courage to say, no, this doesn't work for me. Yeah. But that is still a very, like, under construction, yeah. strong self-worth, mm -hmm. you know? And it's communication of sure. communicating, this doesn't sit right with me, so I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I'm learning about myself is I'm powerless. I'm powerless over my disease of addiction. Mm -hmm. I'm powerless over what other people think of me. Mm -hmm. I'm powerless over what other people do. I'm powerless over my own life. I've got to hand it over to God. So Hand it over to God and my ancestors who are his angels. Mm -hmm. Hand it over and they'll, they'll deal with it because I've been the one that's been getting in the way. Of, of my own purpose. Sure. Oh, oh, you said a mouthful. I want to get to the people pleasing, but I want to take it back a little bit. Tell us about Aya as a child at home with your mom or with your siblings. Take us through that journey first. Okay, so... I was born in Swaziland, and so I think I was a baby. I don't know exactly what age. We then moved to Zambia. So the first eight years of my life, I was in Zambia. Okay. I had lots of fun. Um, it was a close-knit family. My mom, my dad, uh, family members came in and out. Comrades came in and out. Um, and it was a happy unit. I went to church on Sunday, Sunday school. Mm. I uh, went to a great school, had wonderful friends. So, so it really was a happy childhood mm. until I was eight. Mm. When I was eight, my father died. Oh. Um, and that changed everything. Uh, I was an egg, Mingi Gant, yeah. like daddy's little girl. Yeah. You know, uh, if, if daddy was flying to the U.S., He'd say to me, oh, do you want to come with me? Because he was a pilot. They'd be like, oh, I'll think about it. I'm like, if I feel old, this yeah, now I'll think about it. <laughs> and then as he's packing his bags, yes, yeah. I want to come. Yeah. And we go. So he, I was that kind of kid, you know. He died and then we came back to South Africa. I say, I always, it's weird. I always say we came back to South Africa. But I'd never been in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? You see, it's those things, right? There, you see the things I've been saying in India yeah. as we came back to South Africa. But I was yeah. never in South Africa. <laughs> they were in South Africa. <laughs> they brought me yeah. to South Africa, and that was yeah. in 92. So. And then I lived with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. My mother really battled with the loss of her husband. Uh, she was heartbroken. And, you know, my grandmother was a matriarch and she took care of everybody. Um, so she took care of me and I started taking the bus. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, difficult, but I started to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then I was that kid who is black, has a black name. Yeah. Is, is a Zulu name, Zulu surname, but she can't speak is Zulu. Okay. So I was bullied. So sure. and all the different names that that we call that South, as the South Africans call people who are from the rest of Africa, mm. all of that, you know. So uh, they took me out of that particular school, which was a public school, put me in a private school, uh, hoping it would be better. It was kind of better. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I'd always had music around me, so that's where I started just getting involved in extramural activities. Mm. I was in the choir. I got involved in leadership. Mm. Those kind of things. So I was that girl at school that was busy doing yeah. all kinds of stuff to do with um, um, the cultural activities. Mm -hmm. I stopped running in high school because I grew boobs and the boys would laugh because my boobs would jiggle yeah. and I didn't have the right bra. Sure. So I stopped that and I just carried on with my cultural stuff mm -hmm. and leadership roles. Yeah. And that was my, my childhood. You know, my grandmother died in grade 11. Mm -hmm. And that threw a huge spanner in the works. Um, I just felt like the rug had been taken from beneath me. Yeah. And the family struggled without her. I think we still do. We still do struggle without her. Um, but, you know, that, that's life. It happens. So I kind of found solace in uh, university. 
Then I moved into res and got involved in studying drama, studying music, being an SRC. I was busy. I didn't have time for a lot of time for family, a lot of time for myself even, because mm-hmm. I was busy doing other things. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle of my honors, moved to Joburg because of idols. And then just, so I, like I said to you, it's a wave. Yeah. I've just been in the wave, wherever the wave has been taking me, I'm showing. I want to take you back to when you were eight years old and now you come from this beautiful nuclear family with your dad and with your mom and you are daddy's girl and now your dad leaves. How was that day for you when you found out that your father had passed away? So my granny and her best friend Mm -hmm. sat me down and told me that they say I didn't say he was dead or you know these the way we sugarcoat things yeah. or we used to. I always take on I always say we um when my family says things in a certain yeah. way because we're a family, so it's always we. Yeah. But what they had said, um but it was I think something along the lines that he's gone away for a really long time. Yeah. And I remember me saying are you saying daddy is? And then I broke down. Sure. Um, and then my grandmother had to go because they were burying him in Zambia. Mm-hmm. So she had to go and left me with her friend and her friend's daughter and her daughter, who's one of my best friends now. And I stayed with them, and, you know, until sort of the whole mourning period and all of the, the admin of funerals was done. And then, and then they came back and, you know, but I felt lost. Yeah. I felt so lost. And then it gets even more hectic when now mommy's back and she's just like, you know, Aunt, please just go and stay with your mom for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I am still dealing with this. That's the thing. She didn't say that. So she stayed with us. Okay. But she didn't say that. I remember the smell of my mother's tears mm. that she would hide. Mm. You know, Ingane, like Ingane comes into the bedroom and, yeah. and she's been crying and she would hide then. But I remember that smell. Yeah. Never forget it. Mixed with her perfume. Mm. I remember that smell. And that was really painful. She didn't talk about her pain of losing her person. But I could see it. You, and, and what did that do to you? Because you had also lost your dad. And now you've seen your mom in this state. I felt that what I was going through was important. No, no, other people are in pain. Sure. Mm. And you were eight years. Mm. I'll be fine. Other people are in pain. Let's, let's help. Let's be a good girl and not cause problems and just do what I need to do and not make. So even to this day, um, there was a time where when I was in the active addiction and I was always obviously very difficult to be around that my mom cried and I can't deal with my mother's tears mm. because yes, they come with those, all of that. Yeah. So I can't, I can't, I never, that is worse than being in physical pain, spiritual pain. It's the worst thing to deal with. Mm. Yeah. So sure. you say that you felt lost when your father passed away. How are you feeling now? Lost. So the reason I'm feeling lost still, um, look, I mean, I'm older now, so I can manage it. And I've handed it over. But I'm lost because then later on in life, so there was this feeling of being lost throughout my life, right? And then later on when I was 25, so 25, like we just finished shooting Soul Sundays. Yeah, yeah, just mm. after Soul Sundays and I was promoting music and being an almost it girl. Mm. Um, I went to a cousin's party, mm-hmm. uh, her 21st, and there was a drunk auntie there. Mm. And drunk auntie was like, how do you feel now that your sister is 21? And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I love my sister. She's amazing. Yeah. And she was like, uh-uh. Do you not listen to your sister? 
And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And she was like, the lady you call mom is actually your older, your mom's older sister. So the lady you call Aditi is your biological mother. What? 25. Spanner in the works. So it took me back to those feelings of being lost when my father died. And I still call him my father because he is. Yeah. And my mother is still my mother. Yeah. Um, and that feeling of loss, he died from leukemia. Leukemia is a, a, a cancer to do with bone marrow. I carried the guilt of why didn't they ask me for bone marrow? I would have given him bone marrow. Um, walking in the world, feeling like, you know, my father's gone and this is why I'm being bullied. Um, I'm all alone and this is why guys take advantage of me because I don't have brothers, I don't have a father. Um, those kind of things, longing to, to go to his grave in Zambia, which I still have not been to. So mm. all of those things. And then this spanner. So then the question is, okay, so who is mm. I still don't know. So that's why my answer to your question is lost. Yeah. Have you had a conversation with your real mom? Yes. About, about her being your real mom? Yeah. So I, when I found out, I took a bit of time to breathe. Yeah. Then I drove home to KZN to ask my mom. And she was like, yes, this has happened. When you were about six months, your granny brought you to us and asked us to raise you. We're not sure what exactly happened. You'll have to ask your biological mother. And I asked her. Then um, I had a child. The relationship didn't work out. So my mom then said, why don't you ask your biological mom, your aunt, I still call her aunt, to come and stay with you. Yeah. So we lived together for a good two years. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, you know, this just happened. My grandmother came and took her away, took me away. And she doesn't know why. And I was like, okay, so who is my biological father? Mm -hmm. And she said it was a particular individual um, and promised to organize a meeting. Mm -hmm. About five years went by and there was no meeting. Mm -hmm. So I took it into my own hands and I met him, met him just up the road from here. And we had coffee and I asked him, uh, you know, what happened? And he yeah. said to me, he, you know, I've got a scar on my toe. It's not that he knows about and he was telling me that they were raising me and stuff. And one day my grandmother came and took me away and he doesn't know why. And he thought, he said to me that he and my grandmother were so close that, and she was such a wonderful woman that for her to do, this is what he said, is that she was such a wonderful woman for her to do something like that. I believe that there was something she knew that I didn't know. So I didn't look, come looking for you. I didn't fight for you because I trusted what your grandmother had done. And then he said, do you want to get a DNA test? I was like, yeah, sure, let's get a DNA test. So we went just up the road mm -hmm. and got a DNA test. And then about two weeks later, um, the test results came in. He called me and asked me, do you, wanna, do you want them to call you with the results? Do you want an email? Do you want to go in? So I said, no, let's go in. Mm -hmm. We went in and they gave us the results that he's not, 99% not a match. Mm -hmm. I saw the look in his face. Uh, it was a look of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And then you see the other pattern. I kept quiet Ish. and then waited to go home to my mom to tell her about it. Um, and then spoke to my biological mother about it. And I said to her, this is the situation. And she said to me, but you look like him. And I said, Connie Ferguson looks like Dinome Wigetzi on the Queen. Yeah. And they're not related. Mm. And she maintains to this day. I've lived with her before. I see a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, and perhaps she'll never be able to say the truth. Hmm. What does that do to a young woman like yourself? You go looking for love everywhere else. Yeah. I then decided to go and build my own family now because now hmm. I don't know what's going on, you know? I then had a son and started to build that family are so desperately wanting to have my own family that I could control. Cause I'm, yeah. And this whole time, I'm not going to God with this. I'm not. I'm just moving, making my own decisions, left, right, and center, with 
the 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 but but babies and babies and get plug mm-hmm. with the plug yeah of alcohol yeah <laughs> yeah so I can do these things yeah. right yeah and yeah so that's what I was doing mm. sure wow with regard to your dad and feeling guilty and feeling like you could have done more. What conversations do you wish you had with your dad before he died? I know he would have told me what's what. Mm -hmm. So I wish we had had that kind of conversation. But I guess I was too young. I would love to know how somebody... Look, I mean, it's possible, but I've experienced how he loved me like I was in the, yeah, I was his own. Yeah. How how did he do that? Sure. How did he love me? Sure. Unconditionally like that, that I never ever thought that he was not my biological father. Sure. Where, what love is that? Where do you find that? You know? To love me like that. Sure. Yeah. Do you feel like you're not lovable? Sometimes. Mm. I have a really bad temper. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> I think we all do. I'm a temper. So I'll do the people pleasing and then I'll go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do. Um, I think it stems from not knowing 100% of from whence I come. Yeah. And it's, you're gonna, it's, it's a bit, it's a dilemma for me sometimes because I go, but do you really need to know that? You, yeah. I know that God loves me yeah. and I am his daughter and he wants the best for me and he is my heavenly father. Mm. I have a father. Mm. What is it? Okay, there was a part of me that was like, yo, I don't want to meet my brother and fall in love with my brother. And then we yeah. find out, come on, Obona, what I get to meet. What I get to meet. I really prefer yeah. no more drama like that. <laughs> it's not a reality show. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it still feels like, like there's, there's a part that's missing, man. So how can you... How can you love a person or should die you? Because I guess you're supposed to be whole. I'm supposed to be whole. Who says you're not? You see, because God says I am. Exactly. He says I am. Yeah. So those are me saying I'm not. I it's that you. self will, the self thought, trying to control my narrative because again it was a perfect nuclear family yeah. now it's not that now it's now it's a real life be- a- a family. <laughs> yeah you know so who am i you know mm. so there are days there are days it do where i feel like i'm wonderful normally after seven days of manifest uh, of um um, affirmations in front of the mirror. I get you. Then cut a seven. I'm like, I'm amazing. Yes. I'm this, I'm that. And then there are days I'm like, yeah, I'm a bitch, remember? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like snuffy thingy. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 I get and realize it was coming down. Mm-hmm. You know, remember that. It's so funny. Uh, in, just in some of our conversations, you mentioned about Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry once said something that gave me a lot of strength. Mm-hmm. So he, throughout his childhood, um, found out and felt that his father wasn't his biological father mm-hmm. and kept asking his mom, kept asking his mom, his mom said, that's your father, that's your father. And then on his mom's deathbed, he asked her, she said, that's your father. Mm-hmm. And then mom dies, he does the paternity test with dad, dad is not dad. Mm-hmm. And Tyler Perry then said, you know what? I may never, ever know who my biological father is, yeah. but I will do for this man what he did for me, shelter and shirt and kindness as much as I can. Mm. But I've made peace with that I may never know. Uh, like I'm saying, some days I've made peace that I would never know. Yeah. And some days I'm just like, but it's like, where are It's my basic yeah. human right. Yeah. Hello. 
Sure. <laughs> if sure. not, if not food, if not water, I will pretend it. Yeah. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Some things we can't control. We've got to keep moving. But yeah, so that informed my wanting to create a perfect world for myself. And it had even wanting to continue to act mm. that things are perfect because maybe I'd believe it. Sure. Oof. And for me, it stemmed from you doing so many things, right? And it's just like, for me, that is a symbol of somebody who is self-medicating. Oh. Exactly what you did was, you know, alcohol, that's how you managed to cope through life, throughout your entire high school, your primary and so forth, by just doing so many things. Mm. Singing, doing this, doing this. So you had to you had to do so many things so that you don't ever get to a place where you're alone, mm. you've got nothing to do, and therefore that gets to now starting to have conversations with yourself. Yeah. When there were days like that, what types of conversations were you having with you as I are behind closed doors? Uh, where are we going next? We can't suggest and, and start to process things. Where are we going next? We need to go somewhere, you know? What event is happening? Who can I meet up with? You know, what are you up to? Yeah, I didn't sit by myself. Sure. No, this is a new thing. This is like... 2023 thing, sure. Sitting by myself. Mm. Oh, yeah, towards the end of 2022. Why? Yeah. Sitting by myself. And no, the moment something like that would come, I'd have to shift or clean or mummy or, or yeah. something. Yeah. But I, I know this is a new sitting with myself. And now, because I'm learning better, yeah. I'm learning how to sit with my thoughts. Yeah, and with my feelings, without self-medicating, yeah, it's hard. Mm. The things that go through my mind, sometimes it's compassion mm. for my biological mother, yeah. for my mother, mm. for the rest of my family, for my grandmother. Sometimes it's anger. Mm. For But why is it like this? somebody must know something? Yeah. Sometimes it's we gotta do something. Yeah. Gotta find that. Let's go back to that uh, particular father because maybe he did rig the tests like mm-hmm. they said he did. And um, so, and then some days when I'm connected, when I've been either playing praise and worship or I've been to church or I've just been still, that's a new thing for me is that I love silence. Ching, have silence. I can sit in the house with silence for 24 hours and it's not scary anymore. Sure. So, I can sit in silence and on those days that I'm peaceful and that I'm serene, it's light and yeah. I hand over to God and it is what it is. It is yeah. his will. If it is his will that this gets resolved, it is his will. Um, and then the question is, but what is the thing sometimes as well? Why, why do you need to know? Why? Why do you need to know God will reveal everything if and when he wants to? Are you not okay right now? You know, these are conversations I had with myself. Yeah. And I feel better than, I feel more comfortable in my skin than I've ever felt. Not more comfortable. I feel comfortable in my skin and I've never felt that. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. That is so beautiful because that takes, that takes a lot of work. You know, it takes a lot of work and, and eventually finally getting to a point where you're like, you know what, I am worthy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I am amazing. I am magnificent. You know what I mean? I've been fearfully and wonderfully made. How it happened does not matter. You know what I mean? The fact that I'm here says a lot, you know? And it's people like you and me that have been through the whole low self-esteem, the whole self-worthiness questions where, where we end up putting yourself lost to please people. Exactly. And that's what I've been doing all my life. All my life. 
So I'm only now starting to slowly. Pa, I don't really like them. I'm not now going, no, that doesn't fly with me. It's just, I don't really like the still. Still an eight-year-old voice yeah. that will say those things and ask nicely to me. Put, or, or to not be in a situation, or you know? Mm-hmm. This doesn't work for me and stuff. It, it's a different voice tone that comes out. It's not even conscious. I'll realize later that, oh, that was your soft voice. Mm-hmm. Ah, you still have different voices. Got 20, 24 I. <laughs> But it's a work in progress, yeah. you know? And I'm grateful, like you're saying, you know, there's a reason why I'm here. God has yeah. a plan for me. So I'm grateful that I'm still here. There's so many, so many things that, that have happened where I was not going to make it mm. from my addiction to assaults, to all kinds of things, to uh, wanting to commit suicide and not seeing it, not finding it, not still. <laughs> I'm laughing at the ridiculousness of it. I'm not laughing because it's it's laughable that a person yes. wants to do that. Definitely not. But that like, I, that's where I was. And God was like, no. God was like, oh, are you hanging out with this person? Do you know this person is going to try to kill you? But anyway, I still want you around. So as you were, I'll take you out of it when it's time to take you out of it, you know? So it's, oh, you just found this out. Oh, this is how you're feeling. But I'll take you out of it because there's a plan. There's a purpose. I don't know what it is. But he is slowly revealing things. And, and how I know now is that I'll get a feeling. It's this feeling and then all of a sudden tears will well up. Mm-hmm. That's how I know something's right. Sure. That's how I know I've got to do it. That's how I know that God is talking to me. And it's because he's gotten to the point where he's got to show me loudly in sure. that way. It's got to take a physical reaction i've got to, my, i've got to be out of control of my own body yeah. for me to hear him because the little whispers don't work yeah. no not yet mm. yeah not yet yeah. you mentioned assaults and people trying to kill you and just going through so much, you know. Take us through, through that journey. So, when I was, it's, you know, this is a very difficult conversation because I haven't really spoken to a lot of people about it, mm-hmm. a few people here and there. And a lot of the stuff I'm saying, I never ever wanted to say to anyone, but Javada said to me, you have to. You live in a world where there are women who go through this, are being killed every day. Every day. Mm. So that thing of looking for association and looking to, you know, create my own little families or, you know. Mm. So when I was living, and this wasn't the first time, so I was assaulted uh, when I was 16. Okay. That's how I lost my virginity. Mm. uh, With a gun under me, Mm. under my, my right shoulder. And... Uh, you know, there was a party up the road and but the boys in the area decided mm-hmm. that it was going to be really fun to have all the girls over. Mm-hmm. And then the one guy decided it was going to be even more fun to have a gun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he forced us. And uh, that was just about two weeks after my grandmother had died. Mm-hmm. And went for a little bit of counseling and then kind of let it go and moved on. And then later on, there was in varsity, drunken night, I think I didn't even consider it as as rape, right? Mm. Because we were drunk and it was that I woke up and this person was here. Mm. And then they left and so, okay, we were just drunk, but it was not consensual. Mm. And so now I get it, I'm busy, I'm parting, I'm with yeah. that. I'm not saying it's my fault, but I'm saying that the choices that I was making to run away and to be busy and not be home, mm. I ended up in those kind of situations. Sure. Then the last was when I started to hang out with somebody I, I used to get the bus with. I thought he was a really great guy. I considered him to be a friend. Um, very respectable and, you know, adored in, in Durban. And uh, so one day I ended up at his house. Mm. And 
I was like, oh my God, I'm at his house. This is my friend. I feel so safe. This is wonderful. Yeah. You know, oh my God. Oh, I love your place. I love your place. And this and this and that. Oh, you know. And um, let's go down memory lane, you know. It's about when we were kids and stuff. Boys. And then he was like, come, let me show you uh, my new colognes. Because I was like, this thing of yours, and when you look into places and people, your body got fussed by you. Yeah. Colognes. Stop it. It doesn't yeah. cute. You know, guess I am. Yeah. So he was like, oh, let me show you my new colognes. So he went to his bedroom and showed me his new colognes. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Oh, this is your favorite one. Okay, cool. I'm chilled. Mm. And he kissed me. And I was like, uh... But now we're friends. And yeah. like, well, you're single, I'm single, let's do this. Mm. Okay, cool. So then we, you know, kind of get into it yeah. on the bed and making out or whatever. It's going there, but it's not gone there yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing i on game, bam. Mm. One, and I was, my head was ringing. And as I was like, what are you doing? He was like, two. And I was like, un shayelan. Mm. And he was like, admina. And then he got into me and did what he needed to do. She only a third time. And I, whilst he was busy, I held on to his crucifix and I looked to my right mm. and prayed hard. And then he fell asleep and I got up and I ran out of that house, ran into the street and security company cars came past. I told one, one came past, I told them what happened. They said, where did it happen? I told them the surname of where it happened. And they said, see, when it says, and gets gossip, it says, Another car came by. They'd left. Another car came by. Exactly the same story. Where did it happen? I told them where. And they said, Sat Lunis and Guess what? So I called a mutual friend of ours who then came to fetch me. I told that friend, I said, If you're not here in 15 minutes, I'm going to go back in there. And I know he's got guns. I will kill him. Mm. I said that. And he came and fetched me. Then the next day, I went, I opened a case. I posted it on my WhatsApp. Mm. I p- opened a case. And got examined and everything. Worst experience. Look, I mean, the, they did, the cops did the, the right thing in the hospital up until that point. Mm. Until they moved the case to a certain police station. And the police officer told me, don't do this, otherwise it was only man. And at that point, then now I can't deal with real issues, right? So I then went back into more drinking of course and more of other stuff mm. and then um on one i had to then go and go into a hide out hide out in a in a hideaway place then came to joburg to get away because he had told our friends he's going to kill me mm. and then had to then go back when i went back i went out because now I'm angry. So now I'm like, come, I was posting on WhatsApp. Come yeah. and get me. Yeah. You want to kill me? Come and get me. I'm here. Yeah, I'm yeah. not bad. Because now I'm saying, get food. Right? right? Because, right, I don't believe I'm worthy anymore. Mm-hmm. And I just want to die. Yeah. So why don't you come? Let's make it a production. Sure. You know? And um, then all of a sudden I was at one of the places and it was like a courtyard. And then there were lots of people around and then there was nobody around. Mm. And I was by myself. And this guy came in, big guy, scary guy. We look in Teles, Moots. I feel I shall not juggle bushes. Yeah. I'm a little cigarette. And I said, Oh, full of his own blood. And he didn't say anything. And I just kept talking. I'm angry now. I'm shouting. Yeah, this course. guy is in Dubby. It's very clear. Yeah. He's wearing black. We look in Teles. Hectic. We are told. And I realized that he can't talk. Mm, it's possible he can't talk, it's possible he can't hear. So I said, I said, peace, please, my brother. And he looked at me and was like, and then I ran. Mm. And when I ran out, I stood in the middle of the road because it's like traffic that goes this way. I stood in the mm. middle, so something happens, people can see. And when I looked behind me, he was pacing. And I got into an Uber, I requested right there, got into an Uber and I left. He went back to Joburg and then eventually went back home and realized it's rock bottom. And in between that, the father of my child then said, well, you can no longer have access to your son. What those WhatsApp statuses and I'd been missing calls because I guess I was using the alcohol and the other stuff. And so I was missing my calls. Mm. And he said, you can no longer have access. And I was like, okay, it's over for me. And that's how I ended up in my room for 30 days. 
having those conversations. That was my rock bottom. That was the assault that led me, you know. Months later, I got a message from the police saying that the case was closed due to lack of evidence. And I never, I never pursued it because I wanted to live, firstly. And secondly, because it is what it is. Everybody, at some point, you lie in your bed by yourself and you meet God. Mm. You meet your sin. You meet what you've done. I've met mine. I know what it looks like. I still do when I lie in bed at night. And I, it's an intimate relationship I have with God. So I, I don't need to go through all of that trauma of cold cases and all of that. And kill me, not kill me. Whatever. Even now I'm thinking, oh God, what if lies going to see it and then I'm going to die? It is what it is. But that is the truth of what's happened. And, and I'm talking about it because these are the things that make me sick. Mm -hmm. These are the things that keep me from making sincere, deep, sincere music. I'm not saying the music I've made is not sincere. Mm -hmm. That's one side that's happy and pretty and, mm -hmm. and oh, you know, it's, it's, it's pleasant. We can, we can deal with it. It's not too much. Yeah. But these are the things that I battle with at night. And God has said, you have to talk. Yeah. You've got to talk. There's a book that I was reading. And when you, when you, were, when you asked me to come on, like when we yeah. spoke about it, when you said, yeah, no, so when you come back this Thursday, I, I just got emotional and I got scared. And I literally, after hanging up the phone with you, I said, dear God, show me a sign. Sure. And I opened the book, Viola Davis's um, biography, um, Finding Me. Yeah. And the chapter I was on was, she put an insert of, of Sarah J uh, Jakes Roberts talking about, girl, get up. Yeah. Girl, get up. Even when I was sick, I was his. Even when I was dead, I was his, you know? And then Viola says, everybody has secrets. Secrets are the things that kill us. Sure. There's always that one secret that is the nail in the coffin. Mm. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Because the reality is I've got nothing to lose. Mm. I've lost access to my son. There's nothing else to lose. What else can I lose other mm. than my own life? And what kind of a life is it without my child? There's a lot that happened. We might actually need another episode. <laughs> no, I really think we do. <laughs> I think we do. It's good ningi. And, and it's getting good ningi. Oh, it's getting good ningi, I know. <laughs> but I think for me, through it all, for the fact that you're still here, Ayan, all I'm seeing is just God's beautiful hand. You know? And I think sometimes we fail to see his hand because things are just so much and we haven't dealt with so much, right? And I think with you, a lot of the things you haven't dealt with, you know what I mean? And that's why even now in 2024, they, they're still there hanging, you know what I mean? And the beautiful thing about healing is that it's a journey, you know? It doesn't just happen now and then like you are healed. It happens when you start dealing with it and you start facing all of those pains, you know. I remember there was a time when I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror mm -hmm. because all I saw was a ghost, you know. And it was those words where I was bullied, you know, and I was told that, oh, but you are... You're a ghost. You know what I mean? Um, and I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. And when I talk about freedom, this is what freedom is. Freedom is when you can now look at yourself in the mirror. You can tell yourself who you are. You can have those conversations with yourself. But also freedom is when you couldn't even look at yourself in the mirror, but now you're talking to hundreds and millions of people on a daily basis and you're bringing hope and healing, something that crucified you as a person. Now that is true power. Absolutely. That is true power. And you're a powerful being. You're worthy. And I love you. I love you. I love you so much. I love you too.
What conversations are you having with yourself now about worthiness? Girl, you better believe it because you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've got to say it. I've got to say it. One of my favorite albums is India Reads Worthy. I've got to play that album over and over again. I've got to keep telling myself. Yeah. I've got to. And the other thing as well is I've got to put it into action. Yeah. You understand? So I've got to wake up in the morning and get myself dressed, get myself bathed, put on my favorite lipstick. Sometimes I just wear lipstick in the house yeah, because it's a Tuesday and I choose to, you know. Uh, Or just sit, do some yoga, Mm -hmm. run, do something that is good for me, that will benefit me. So it's turning into a lot of the conversations are, do you know that you're worthy? Oh, are you not feeling worthy today? That's fine. Go for a walk. That'll make you feel better about yeah. doing something with your body. Do some yoga. Do some dance. Cook your favorite meal. Yeah. Cook for somebody else, you know. Be helpful to somebody else. Because now I try as well to also be helpful without the expectation of you're going yeah. to love me if I do this for you. Yeah. I'm doing it because I really want to see you happy. Sure. Because that makes me feel good. Yeah. But it's about you. You know, yeah. and that makes me feel worthy as well. Sure. So it's a constant conversation and constant action, uh, doing something for work. So every day I have to do something towards my work. Mm. It, even if it's a, an email, if yeah. it's a bad day and I don't want to do anything, draft the email at least. I yeah. Know, you know, so that's what it is. For me, the conversations are, are seeds that go into action. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to also talk about your music. Um, and how you are able to to take what you're feeling and your mental being and pour that into your music. And I know that you've mentioned that you haven't gotten to a point where you are pouring out from your deep, deep, deep soul. Are you writing? Are you, like, how do you unravel those feelings and that anger now? I am, finally. So it started, I mean, with the the latest EP, there's one song called Luto that is that, you know. So it's it's it started from how I was really, really feeling. It came out of another song called Away that I haven't released yet about, you know, one the final assault, you know. So I'm now writing about my experiences and waiting on God to say, go, mm. this producer. That's literally what's happening. Mm. Um, the music is there. I'm always writing now, which is another thing because for years I had writer's block. Mm. Uh, which one is not? Yeah, I think Luto. Was it everything? But one, yeah, everything. Everything was the first song. So everything's on the new EP. Mm-hmm. Everything was the first song I wrote since, tw- when was that sunborn? 2010, 2011. Mm. So between 2011 and 2022, I did not write anything. Hmm. I was singing all my old songs and stuff, but there was writer's block because I was doing things that were clouding my connectivity to God. Sure. And I was taking things in my self-will. So now that I'm resting with God yeah. and I'm in his presence mm-hmm. and he's literally saying, okay, do this, okay, do that. The interesting thing is, you know how I was saying I don't have the courage when it comes to being obedient. Bless you, my angel. Thank you. When it comes to being obedient about what God whispers and he's got to do things to make me like physically feel that he's talking to me. When it comes to music and when it comes to songs that he brings to me and when he says work with this person, don't work with that person, I do it. I do it. And I'm so grateful for that. And I had to walk all of these journeys. Maybe it's because what I've been through has made me raw on the inside. You understand? So, it, 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 it's raw, so it's sensitive. Thank you. So when God says something to do with music because it's so close to my heart, yeah. 
I immediately pick it up and, and I will do or not do what he's saying I should. So, and that's the thing, he's whispered to me and we've had conversations yeah. about what music to release next. But he said, not yet. Yeah. Don't talk about it yet. Mm. We are in development. I'm building you mm. for that. Right now, this is what you do with your music. Sure. Let it go where it goes. Yeah. Do you know the feeling of it's none of my business? So, sure. Oh, is the EP going to be a popular? It's none, it's none of my business. None of my business. Yeah. Oh, is the EP going to win an award? Yeah. None of my business. Yeah. Is it going to be on radio? None of, None of my business. It's going to touch the people it's supposed to touch. Um, maybe it's going to teach me certain things in terms of being more in control of my own music business. Because I'm my music business now. There's no label. It's sure. me. I'm the label. Yeah. So I'm now more in control. And perhaps that's what that's about. But I no longer worry about airplay, popularity, hit song when it comes to my music because it's not mine shall arts mm -hmm. it's god's music so whatever he wants to do with it he will do yeah and the people he wants me to work with with this music that i've written now mm -hmm. for when it's supposed to come out he will let it out yeah so i now finally know the feeling that artists have been talking about over the years that i never understood where they said i'm just writing i'm writing all the time the song comes to me at night yeah. and i keep it i get it now yeah. i get it and it's like oh my god that's what you guys were talking about yeah. but i was so busy that i didn't have the stillness Ooh. to feel that to let it happen to mm. feel it and so music has now become my healers. Yeah. You know? Sometimes I listen to the songs in my first album and I go, oh, she was so young. Yeah. Stan, what she was singing, those sure. words are big words. But they heal me now. Yeah. They really do. Sure. As a woman, heals me. I wrote it when I was 16. Yeah. And today it heals me. So now I get, because when people would say, oh, we love as a woman, we love it. And I, I didn't get it. Sure. When we released the first album, yeah. they wanted as a woman to be the first single. Mm. I said, no, we must make it and get double girl. Uh -huh. Because I guess I was the up, by yes. up girl. So get double girl. It's a lot more up tempo. Yeah. We can't release a slow jam. Of <laughs> Come now. Why? Why are we releasing a slow yeah. jam? Yeah. But they were onto something because as a woman became the song, that everybody knows without ever being released as a single. Sure. Well, everybody who knows me as a musician yeah. knows it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the world's famous. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody, darling. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's that. That's like, that song, that, that's why I say the music is not mine. Free. You know, there's a song called Free on the new EP. That is up tempo and was written a while back, but wasn't ready to be released. That's another song. I decided, no, I want to release Luto as the first single when people are loving free more. And if it touches one person in the audience, it touches one person on a streaming device or on a post that I do. That's that person that the song was made for. Sure. Yeah. Oh, when you know, when you're so basic born, yes, it's vegan, it'll yeah. come. Yeah. Have you written about your son? And the yeah. fact that you can't see him? Not that I can't see him. No. I've written about him in terms of the wonderful human being that he is. Yeah. And the things that I want him to know about himself. Sure. Because I can, own, I can never know. But for a 13-year-old to be without his mother, there's going to be damage there. Of course. Of self-worth. Yeah. Um, emotionally, psychologically, and all I have right now is my voice for him to know how I feel about him sure. and how I see him and how God sees him. It's too painful to write about not being with him yeah, right now, but I don't know what God's going to do. Sure. I don't know. Maybe we'll write the song together about how it felt to be without each other because he plays the piano as well. And maybe when we are finally reunited, we'll write that together. Mm. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it'll come 
sooner maybe the question that you've just asked me will spark a bit of courage yeah. to do that. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Sure. If I was your son right now, what would you say to me? I would want to say I'm sorry. That's sorry. That's cut it. I don't know what you are going through. And if I could take it away, I would every little part. But every day, every single day, I think of you. Every day I pray for you. And every day I do something to make me a better mother for you and for myself. And it was never, ever your fault. Never, ever about you. Never, ever. I never, ever didn't want you or left you in my right senses. I was weak and I got tired of fighting. But that was because I didn't know what the fight was. The fight is spiritual. God will reunite us. Yeah. And everybody will know, you will know mm -hmm. that it's God. Sure. Because you're not mine, you're God. Yeah. Sure. I am. You've got two hands and you've got 10 fingers. Are you reaching your full potential? I'm on the way. I think I for the first time have feel the potential to reach my full potential. Sean. I feel it. It's there. Yeah. Every day I try and reach the full potential of that day that will lead me toward reaching my full potential. But I believe that I will for the first time. Sure. I believe it. Oof. We've come to the last section of the show where I ask you your perspective on various things no yeah what is your perspective on power the power is a drug mm. it's a drug if you don't know who is in power and if you if power is used as a form of control and as a form of aggression mm. um and as a form of selfishness. But power, when it's used from whence it comes, yeah. from a higher power, yeah. from God, can be beautiful. Sure. Yeah. I love that. What is your perspective on spirituality? It needs intimacy mm. and a connection with God. Sure. Whatever your higher power is. Yeah. Once you have that connectivity, your spirituality grows sure. and shifts and changes yeah. and is a beautiful garden to live in. Yeah. Oof. What's your perspective on family? Family is forever. Yeah. And family requires compassion, mm -hmm. unconditional love, the same way that God loves us. Yeah. And not expectations of others. You should sure. love family for who they are, yeah. not who you want them to yeah. be or what they you want them to do. Yeah. Oof. What is your perspective on self-love? It's hard, mm. but it's worth it, and we all deserve it. Yeah. So if, if after after love, loving God and having a relationship with God, it's the next most important love in a human being's life. Mm. So, sure. Aya, please grab that mirror over there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I started seeing my greatness and power when I started to see me and stop looking at me. What do you see when you look into that mirror? I see pain. I see joy. 
I see hope. I see triumph. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I see peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. sure. Thank you. And this episode was made possible by Same View Pictures with their state-of-the-art video and sound equipment, as well as Vela Creatives with their post-production. Powered by IS Wines. Aya, so this is a very crucial time for South Africa in terms of elections, right? Um, why would you say it's important for us to vote this year? Especially to us, the young ones, you know? I mean, like, we're still young, I guess. Yes, no, we are. Yes, yes. Ah. we are young. <laughs> we are still a youth. <laughs> we are a youth. Yeah, <laughs> we really are. Um, it's important because we have to take responsibility for our own country. Yeah. We can't go, oh, no, government. Oh, no, these people. Oh, no, those people. Mm. We have the political freedom mm. to be able to make choices yeah to use our rights mm. if it doesn't matter that people died for the rights to people because i think we, a lot of people become immune to that with the people died mm. for us to have this liberation people sacrifice if that doesn't mean anything mm. what does your own life mean for you today mm. it means power you have the power to do something about it. Mm. And every vote does count. Yeah. It does matter that you vote or not. Yeah. So vote, mm. you know, let's have the South Africa that we want to have. Yeah. And if we do vote, well, when we vote, mm. if you happen to vote and the party that you voted for doesn't win the majority mm. or, or what, then you don't get the results that you wanted. There's still things like coalitions and there's all kinds of things that, that, that can be made possible in order for there to be a positive outcome. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. Let's contribute towards our own country. Let's yeah. be patriotic. Yeah. Let's not be passengers and sit back and say someone is driving the bus, they crashed yeah. the car. So they crashed the bus, so it's their yeah. fault. But you're in the car yeah. and you didn't give directions. Because you didn't wake up to vote, I get very upset about it. <laughs> Me too. I'm going. Get it too. I get so upset about elections because I think a lot of us, we never used to vote, right? I will be honest. the The last time, the last and the first time I voted was the last elections. Mm. You know. And I think for me, it's because I was starting to see what was happening mm. in South Africa, and I was like, you know what? As a young person. Mm. I was a youth youth at that time. As a young person, I really have to take charge of South Africa because we are responsible of how this country comes out, right? Exactly. And not every one of us wants to leave the country. No, we, don't we want, want to go country. and travel and work yeah, and go on holiday and come back. This is our home. This is our home. You know? And there's no country like South Africa. No. So please, let's go and vote this year. Um, Yeah. Let's go and vote this year, okay? Sure. I am. My. This camera, this camera, this camera. Please tell us what you have going on. When should people expect the EP and NTR and where they can catch you on social media? Okay. So, wait, wait, this camera, this camera, I can choose any camera. You can choose any camera. No, I have a camera. Television in so long. You understand? <laughs> I feel like a child. That's just been said, been put in a toy store <laughs> and said, which toy do you want? Which toy do you want? <laughs> I'm going to start with that toy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so good to be here. So make sure to catch me in terms of everything that's happening in my career, particularly with my music. You can find me on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It is Aya Mbama. And then TikTok is I am Aya Mbama. Going to be doing a lot of traveling this year, doing a lot of tribute shows. And I'm also going to be releasing a new EP at some point this year. We haven't yet put a date to it, but I get it. We're in the kitchen. So yeah. The kitchen. Yeah. 
But it's not an empty promise that I can promise you. Yeah. <laughs> Lively. I, uh, a candle tried to burn me. It tried to ruin me. But it's all, it also tried to kill me. But that very same candle lives within me. And that candle is shining bright. So from my candle to your shining candle, I'd like to say, keep shining. Thank you, my angel. I love you. I love you. <laughs> and from me, Mrs. Itumining Sikubedi, keep your perspective alive. <laughs> <laughs>